Hey guys. Welcome to Couple. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. On May 31st, the same day the Trump administration announced steel and aluminum tariffs against the European Union, French President Emmanuel Macron placed a call to President Trump. It didn't go well. Hoping perhaps to draw on goodwill fostered by the congenial time they spent together in Washington in April, just before Trump disappointed Macron by withdrawing the US from the Iran nuclear deal, the French president decided to try some straight talk with Trump on trade. A source explained the outcome to CNN, Macron thought he would be able to speak his mind, based on the relationship. But Trump can't handle being criticized like that. That's why the gathering of leaders of the G7 countries, the US, the UK, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and Canada, in La Malve, Quebec, on June 8 and 9 is unusually interesting. The host nation's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, previewed the G7 meeting as extraordinarily valuable, because it's an opportunity for like-minded nations to come together and talk about shared challenges. Like-minded? Shared challenges? Not with a US president who sees allies as constraints and prefers to get things done by twisting arms and making threats. Donald Trump made his mark in the cutthroat world of New York real estate the way a tough-minded poker player bullies those at the table with less money to spend. He played as if he had bottomless pockets. The guy who is not afraid to lose a few hands likes to push the stakes, to go all in and to dare those across the table to accept more risk by staying in the game. With that strategy, he won many hands without always holding the best cards or sitting on a fat wallet. As president, Trump brought this strategy to the table with South Korea and Brazil. When he made trade threats, the governments of those countries knew they could bring the US before the World Trade Organization and, probably, win. But that would take years, and their economies would suffer much damage in the meantime. Instead, they cut deals. And so they figured, give the bully some of what he wants and maybe he'll turn his attention towards someone else. The renegotiation of NAFTA may eventually end in the same fashion.